Welcome back to Reading Bear. Today, we will take a look at some new I do work here lady stories. And if you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comments. Let's go! The first story is titled, Yes, I am that temporary manager. Karens really don't believe you if you look young, huh? A bit about me so it's easier to understand the situation. About a year and a half ago I worked at a grocery store, one of many, and I got the job as a manager. Now, note, I wasn't a full manager, I was simply filling in till someone else comes in as I did not have the full training for it. I had only worked at the store for 8 months, but was more than capable of doing a manager's job. Ordering, counting the money, closing up and opening, making sure everything is up to date, I was doing my job. I did, however look young as I actually was. The store I worked in had many rude customers who would walk in looking to cause trouble as if God had sent them on a mission and said go my child, ruin some pork cashier's day. So, a day is like another, I'm in the dairy section looking for things that are going out of date. The only employees are two cashiers, one janitor and me. I hear a commotion at the cash registers, but since my co-workers are way older than me I figure they can handle the situation. Key word, figure. I hear someone stomping towards me, it's like the gates to hell opened and this absolute unit of a Karen marches towards me. Her face filled with anger. She takes a look at me, turns around and stomps back. What? I clearly have a little name badge which says, Op, Manager. I heard commotion again, but I am on a tight schedule here so I continue taking out all the bad cheese. Not one minute later I hear stomping again. In the most annoying, squeaky voice she asks, are you the manager? Me, yes, how may I help you? Karen, no, you can't be the manager, you are an imposter. I know all the employees in this store and you are not one. I don't know why she's screaming at me, but in a calm voice I say. I am the temporary manager, is there anything I can do for you? She yells, I demand the real manager. A kid like you cannot be one. Give me the real manager. I try to explain that I am one, but she keeps screaming like a pig being strangled to death. I tell her that she can call my boss, there is a number near the exit on the board and she storms out. I hear her complaining about how I am a liar and won't get the real manager out, how there is a kid at the store who is working illegally, how I am incompetent and should be fired if I really work there. Ten minutes later my boss pulls up. Explains to the Karen that I am in fact a manager and asks again how I could help. Turns out she ate a whole 24 pack of sausages and only then noticed they were three days till the expiration date not even expired like. And demands a refund. She got kicked out. The next story is titled Pizza Delivery to a Rude, Nasty, Condescending, and Rich Karen, while I was eight months pregnant, for a weird reason. Preface, I am resposting this so sorry if you read it before. I made a huge error in how I put the tittle and I respect the mods for removing it. I hope they let this one stay up. I enjoyed all the commentary and also the advice of others on better ways I could have stated the title without being offensive to anyone. I really would really like this story to remain. If it is removed again, I won't attempt posting it further. Also a disclaimer as well I would like to state I am not trying to be offensive to infertile women, just am pointing out her absurd reasoning for being rude to me, instead of being happy for me or at least indifferent. I have a lot of respect for women with troubles like that. You will understand why I say this later on. On with the story. This happened 15 years ago. My daughter is now a wonderful person too, definitely not a Karen. I worked at Pizza Place with a red hat logo as a driver while I was very very pregnant. I had ordered a new work shirt as I had gotten way too big in the belly to have my shirt cover my belly bump. My watermelon style belly was getting rather round due to all the free pizza I was getting from my managers that wanted to help my skinny butt grow a baby better. Well I was allowed to wear a plain black t-shirt as long as I had my name tag and hat on until a new shirt arrived the next day. I got in a delivery run in the very rich area of town called Feather Sound. At first I was really happy cause this area was known for its great tips, and when you are a driver you want all the tips you can get cause you are not reimbursed for your fuel costs, except a dollar a run minimum and this was during a time where gas prices were the worst we had seen in like 8 years. These people had ordered a huge amount of food, 15 boxes of medium pizzas all together, they had a sale on medium pizzas at the time. 
I walked up to the door first with no pizza to make sure I got the right address and to see if anyone would want to help grab so many boxes, as I was rather obviously fat with baby. I get to the door and the almost typical Karen, woman, minus the blonde hair and instead had black Dorothy Day-like hair, answering it almost yells at me before I can speak, WHO are you, WHO invited you to the party, very rudely. I hesitate for a split second in a bit of shock and say, sorry ma'am I had to order a new work shirt, but I am your delivery driver Liz for your pizza order. She states to me rudely but not as bad, but where is the pizza then and why are you pregnant? She said that last word with some disgust in her voice. I said as nicely as I could at first, ma'am I am sorry for any confusion, but since it was such a large order I wanted to check to see if this was the right door, and to see if possibly someone could help me carry the 15 boxes up to your lovely home, it was a MC mansion with a looning walk from the curb to the front and I had a small oil leak in my car and didn't want to even dare ask to use her pristine drive. And I am pregnant because, well it happens when you get married. I said the last sentence a tiny bit condescending, as she was scowling at me. She then started to go on a long diatribe of how she was not going to help me or have anyone help me as pregnant or not it is your job to serve me and how nothing better be eaten or I will call and get you fired. I got really sick of her attitude and my feet were hurting from being on them all day in my current condition, so I just said no problem and walked to the car while she was still talking. I know she was technically in the right, but it doesn't hurt to see if someone doesn't have a heart or possibly a spare kid to lend me for a few minutes to get everything taken care of faster. I decided to be a bit of a dick, and stack all 15 pizzas and walked carefully to the door so I could get away from her as fast as I could. She was standing there realizing I had enough of her, with her arms crossed, and stood away from the doorway and said put them on the table inside now. I realized that she was just being in a hole as I saw many children, about 12 to 15 years old, that could have helped out, or at least gotten them from the door to the table, as there was a policy that we were to never enter a home due to risks of mugging or other attacks. I didn't want to fight her at this point and wanted away from her so as I passed her into the home I said, ma'am it is policy that we don't enter the house but since this is just too many to try to take out of my arms, I will quickly do it. This turned out to be the best thing cause as I got to the table her sweet husband saw me from the kitchen, and he realized what was going on as his wife had started idioting again about, poor service, and stating again that, your pregnant self better had not eaten any of her sweet children's food. Once I gave her the receipt and the total when I got back to the door. Her husband got really red in the face and as she started to hand me a check, which I could see that she had left me literally 5 cents as a tip, he grabbed it from her quietly, read the amount, and gave her a face that said, shut up Karen. He then proceeded to hand me in cash the cost of the food and a $50 tip. She was silent as this happened and kept her head low, and one of the children then said, wow that is so much pizza mommy, why did you have her take it all up? We could have helped. Like last time we had a party, and we helped that old man. This statement got her really bugged out eyes as I just smiled and thanked them both for ordering with our pizza place, as the door shut you could see that her husband was glaring at her, and her eyes were the size of dinner plates. As I got to the car I could hear faint stern voice of the husband, which sounded like he was laying into her. When I got back to the restaurant, apparently the husband had called to apologies to the nice pregnant woman for his horrible wife's treatment as she always get nasty to pregnant women as she had to adopt all of their children. What a nice husband dude. I hope she learns not to be a dick to women just because they are with child and she is unable to birth a child. I do respect her for adopting at least more than one child not to mention adopting even one child. I got some much needed baby items with that $50 just despite her rudeness. Final commentary, pardon any errors as I am dyslexic. If anyone wishes to share this on YouTube or other platforms you may, just comment with a link to it please. Thanks again mods for understanding I am sometimes not very smart. The next story is titled, Yes I am the server owner, I run a emotional support discord server and while I was taking a break for a week, so I can catch up on some school work, I had a few people join just to interact with others, which I didn't mind, and my moderators caught me up on what I missed before I went offline again. When I came back after my break I was caught in the middle of an argument. Turns out that one of them started ordering people around and the moderators were trying to calm them down. When I had stepped up and said that they would have to calm down or they would have to be banned because of what they were saying and doing was way against the rules and they claimed that none of us were the owner so I couldn't ban them. 
She called them staff. I informed them I was the owner and they were the moderators, staff and kicked her so that way she wouldn't make any more drama and backtrack anyone work with patients. It ended up her needing to be banned and her being reported. Turned out she didn't even read the rules either so that would explain her not knowing I was the owner, as I have made it so only I can make rules. I hope I put this in the right reddit I haven't made any true good posts other than questions and a few small ARGs the next story is titled lady claims to be owner's daughter so a little backstory on where I work. It's a very small family business where we sell pools and pool chemicals. Only two desks in our office which can fully see into the showroom. One desk for the manager and one for me. Also when I say small business I mean it. Normally, it was always just me, assistant manager, and my mum, I had been in this business since I was born, therefore knew a lot for my age. However, we had just recently hired someone new that was a little older than me, I was 21 at the time and my new co-worker was 28. Now onto the story. The cast will be. Matt equals co-worker. Me equals me, der. Karen equals idiot customer. KK equals Karen's kid. The manager, my mum, had to go and pick up some office supplies for us and mail off some bills so it was just me and my co-worker. We weren't very busy at the time since it was a weekday and fairly close to closing time, so I was sitting at my desk and he was at the manager's desk, since he didn't have his own, on our phones waiting to hear the door open. We hear the door open and my co-worker, we will just call Matt from here out, starts to get up and I tell Matt that I've got this one so he sits back down. I stand up and see this lady, Karen and her kid come in and start walking around. I walk out into the showroom and welcome them to the store and ask if they need help finding anything. Karen, we are just looking right now. I will let you know if we have any questions. KK, I want a pool toy. Where's the toys at? Me, well the pool toys are right over in the aisle by the door and on that wall there. I motioned to the wall where all the displays were. Karen, I told you that we didn't need any help right now. Quote. I just stepped back and walked into the office not wanting any confrontations this close to closing. They continued looking around for another few minutes when I heard the kid hollering from the front of the store. I looked up and the kid was climbing on our ladder samples which clearly have neon green signs that are 8 inches by 11 inches that say, do not climb on. So I walked up to the front of the store and politely told the kid that he couldn't climb on them. Karen, you can't tell my son what to do. KK, I just want to climb on them. He then starts to cry. Asterisk this kid was about 10 years old. Me, I'm sorry but it is against company policy to have anyone climbing on them for safety purposes. Karen, well then maybe you should have a sign on them that says you can't. I point at the sign that says you can't. Karen, well you should have made the sign bigger. I'm not the best at containing my frustration and when I get frustrated at someone my sarcasm comes out with absolutely zero filter. This kid had been running around our store screaming like a banshee and I was getting very annoyed. Me under my breath, well maybe try using your eyes next time. Karen, what did you say to me? Me, I said to look for a sign next time you want to let your son climb all over displays in a store. And I walked away. She continues walking around with the kid still crying until she gets to the one corner where we have some Legos for kids to play with while their parents wait to have their water tested or be helped. Mind you, the test lab was closed and the area roped off with all the lights shut off to that corner. KK screaming, I want to play with those Legos. Karen, alright just go ahead. I wasn't even in the mood to say no, as long as it stopped him from crying. Then he starts carrying them out from the designated area and throwing them down the aisles at our toy displays. I had enough of these little crap because I knew I was gonna have to clean it up. I've been told that I'm pretty scary when I'm angry too. Me to KK, you are not allowed to take the Legos from the play area. Please put them back where you got them from. Karen, who do you think you are talking to my son that way? Me, I am simply telling you both that what he has been doing is not allowed in our store and he needs to stop. Karen, well how dare you talk to us that way. I'll have you know that I'm the owner's daughter and I will have you fired for this. Mind you, the owners are my grandparents. And she sure as hell isn't my aunt. She walks up to the counter that looks into the office before I could say anything. Karen to Matt, have you heard how your employee talks to me? He is the most rude employee I have ever seen in here and as the owner's daughter I demand that you fire him. Matt, well I can't do that. Karen, why not? He is a ruder hole. 
Matt, I can't fire him, because he's my boss. Karen, what? No he isn't. You are lying to me, she's droning on and on. Now, we have an employee picture on the wall celebrating our business's 50th anniversary with everyone labeled in the picture including the owners and all their kids. Karen finally shuts up and looks at me while I'm grabbing the picture frame off the wall. I slide it in front of her and point to my label. My name, assistant manager with grandson underneath my name and title. Her face turned every shade of red under the sun. Me, so you mean to tell me that you're a long lost aunt of mine because if not, you can get the hell out of this store. She practically dragged her kid out of the store while trying to run out the doors. She kept pushing on our doors trying to get out their pull doors. Me shouted to her, maybe try to pull the doors ya dumbass. The next story is titled, working as an intern, got mistaken for client and treated like a child. My last semester of college, I did an internship as a part of my special education degree. The organization I was working for was what's called a sheltered workshop, essentially a place for companies to send product to be processed by people with intellectual and developmental disabilities, autism, Down syndrome, etc. at a reduced wage. I actually spent the entire semester researching sheltered workshops and the practice of subminimum wage, so it felt like undercover journalism most of the time. The employees or clients are monitored and supported by a large staff of barely trained non-disabled employees. I have chronic pain and fatigue, which means that I need to use mobility aids to get around. I alternated between a rolling walker and a manual wheelchair for most of my time there. I was the only non-client with a disability. I also wore a lanyard with my badge on it, which had my name and intern, university name in big letters. Now, sometimes, my lanyard would get turned around so the front couldn't be seen. On many occasions, I would be doing work on my computer or a notebook while sitting in a common area, and one of the non-disabled employees would strike up a conversation either with me or with a group including me. Without fail, they would always address me with the same tone and manner they addressed the clients, while speaking perfectly normally to everyone else around. My personal favorite way of handling that was when they would pull the sugar sweet, and who are you? Oh, hi. I'm, name, the intern from, university. So nice to meet you, I'm really learning a lot from this experience. The look on their face as it dawns on them that I'm actually an articulate, college-educated person still makes me laugh to this day. It's like you could see the gears turn and the foot get shoved in their mouth. Lesson to be learned, don't treat disabled people like children, and never assume someone using a wheelchair is by default also intellectually disabled. The next story is titled, Is there a doctor on board? Some background before I begin, I'm a doctor. This event happened a few years ago now back when I was a junior doctor, so shiny you could use me for a shaving mirror. I also had a career before I did medicine so I was 30 years old when this happened. I had been a doctor for about 8 months. So I was on a flight with a well-known airline that has this weird obsession with putting pictures of kangaroos everywhere, with my then fiancé and some of our friends going for a trip to Bali. The plane had just taken off, maybe 15 minutes in the air when the flight crew say over the intercom the words every doctor dreads to hear on a plane, is there a doctor on board? After looking around and seeing that no one else was getting up, I reluctantly head forward to the crew area to introduce myself. Looking very grateful for my presence, a flight attendant shows me to where the passenger in question is sitting. I walk up to a man who looks half dead. Thankfully, he has a medic alert bracelet and is still conscious enough to tell me exactly what is going on. He has Addison's disease, an autoimmune disease affecting the adrenal glands, and he feels like he is having an adrenal crisis. Basically he is in shock due to a lack of the hormones that the adrenal gland secretes. This is normally managed initially by a hydrocortisone injection followed by several days of care in the nearest hospital. Unfortunately he did not have the right documentation to be able to bring his auto-injector onto the plane, so it is in his checked luggage. Crap. So I tell the flight attendant to inform the pilot that we need to get this man to a hospital as soon as humanly possible. Another flight attendant was in the process of talking to an on-call medical advice service for airlines in emergencies, and the doctor on the other end agrees with my assessment. The plane turns around heading back to the airport we just came from. I have a conversation with the on-call service, amazing team of people, I wish I found out the name of the organization so I could shout them out, unfortunately it got lost among all the other things happening, boring doctor conversation happens, I get given a plan for the patient on the plane. Awesome. 
The aircraft had a surprisingly well-stocked first aid kit on board, so I begin administering fluids to my new patient while all of this is happening. As I am doing so, a woman comes up and introduces herself as a nurse, showing me her work badge, don't ask me why she had one on the plane, I have no idea. Great, the extra set of experienced hands will be useful. I ask her to start the fluids once I get a line inserted into the patient, and to then recheck his vitals in a few minutes to see how he is responding. The flight attendant who initially took me to the patient then tells me that the nurse should be able to handle it from here, and that she would like me to return to my seat. Okay, that's weird. Her demeanor is a bit off, but I never noticed at the time. But there is nothing else I can do for the guy with onboard resources, we don't have the drugs he needs, and the nurse was perfectly happy to stay with him and alert me if anything goes downhill. So I go back to my seat thinking I have done a good job, not bad for a shiny noob doctor. Fast forward 20 minutes and the plane has landed again, and we appear to have gone to an empty gate somewhere away from the main terminals. The same flight attendant comes up and asks if I could please go and speak to the paramedics at the front of the plane as they board. Sure thing. So I head up to the front of the plane where I am met by two very serious looking police officers. Sir, would you mind stepping off the plane for a moment, we would like to have a chat with you. Uh oh, what did I do? I of course comply, and step off the plane, after which I am taken about two minutes walk away from the plane and put in an office. Are you aware that impersonating a doctor is a serious offense? One officer asks me. I ask what this was all about, and I'm told that the cabin crew called ahead to say that a medical student impersonating a doctor was treating a patient on board the aircraft. They ask for my ID and any documentation I can provide to prove I am a doctor. Slight problem, while I can provide my registration number, every doctor in my country has one and it can be used to look up the individual registration online, my passport, wallet, ID, everything is in my carry-on bag under my fiancé's seat. One officer steps out to talk to someone, I assume to get my carry-on off the plane, while the other officer continues to talk to me. I later found out that the nurse who helped me vaguely recognized me from somewhere. I had been on placement at her hospital as a medical student the year before, and she told the flight attendant that she thought I was a medical student. Rather than talk to me about it, they just assumed the nurse was right and took steps to separate me from the patient. I was so focused on the patient, I never noticed the change in body language from the cabin crew or really took notice of the oddity of asking me back to my seat. Then again later, they lied to me to get me to exit the plane quietly. The officer who had stepped out came back after what felt like half an hour or so and through police magic was somehow able to verify who I was and that I was actually a doctor. Phew, I was half doubting myself for a minute there, but they hadn't thought to speak to the airline about all of my belongings. They let me go, and take me back to where the plane was. Only problem, the plane wasn't there. They had refueled and taken off again. So now I am stuck in an airport on the wrong side of passport control without any form of identification, no home key, no money, no phone, nothing. I hadn't been able to speak to my then fiancé or any of my friends, so they had no idea what was going on. I had just vanished from their perspective, and no one would answer their questions throughout the entire flight, or after they landed. The airline I was flying with also had the gall to try and deny any wrongdoing. They refused to transfer me to a different flight as I was asked to leave the plane so I must have been in the wrong, and so they did not want a disruptive passenger on board one of their aircraft. And oh yeah, I had no passport. As far as they were concerned, I should just go away and leave them well alone. They even tried to prevent me from using their phone to call someone for help. I ended up having to call my now father-in-law to come and pick me up. I had to stay with them for a week without any clothes or toiletries until my now wife got back with all of my stuff because I don't have a key to get into my apartment. Thankfully I managed to contact her after she landed so she at least knew I was safe, but she stayed with our friends and enjoyed her holiday. No sense both of us being stuck at home. They even tagged me in all of the photos of them over there. Cheeky gits lol. In the end I managed to win a claim through small claims court, but it took an awfully long time to process. I got my money back with a small amount for damages. Throughout the entire process, despite witness statements from other passengers, the airline still adamantly refused to admit they had done anything wrong. There is still ongoing litigation, which I am oh so looking forward to, so I will not be directly naming the airline that is totally not mentioned down in the comments.
Now I try to get some alcohol ASAP once I board a plane so that I can refuse to assist due to being impaired. Also, I'll never fly that airline ever again. Oh, and the guy made a full recovery. He sent me a thank you letter with some chocolates once he got out of the hospital. I still have the card to this day, and I cherish it greatly. The chocolates were crap though lol. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel and post some bear emojis in the comment.